Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. My name is Andrew Hamilton. I've said hello to many of you already this evening. I'm the Vice Chancellor of Oxford University, and it's my enormous pleasure to welcome all of you to this very special, this first Oxford India Lecture. I have to say, it's rather wonderful to be standing here on a stage at the Leela Palace Hotel under this glorious Delhi sunshine that we've had all day today and in front of this magnificent drop backdrop behind me and I know many of you are Oxford graduates and it's rather wonderful to see this classic outline of Oxford the city of dreaming spires and and I know we have a few Cambridge graduates here and it does remind us that that while Oxford is the city of dreaming spires of course Cambridge is the city of perspiring dreams and each of us has our roles to play and it is rather lovely to see the sunshine as, as I said and we do in Oxford, of course, complain about the rain rather naturally. But I find here that the opposite is the case. And, and as I was preparing for this speech, I noticed a recent headline, Monsoon Magic Returns to Delhi. And I have to tell you, that was rather a surprise to me. And we would love to send over to you some of our Oxford English drizzle. Uh, but uh, I suspect it would not be as welcome here as it is at home. It's a very great pleasure to be here for this first Oxford India lecture. This series is our way of bringing some of the best Oxford research and activity into dialogue with a wider audience. At Oxford University, we are committed to the belief that academics have a genuine responsibility to share their work with a wider audience. So often, we bury ourselves in our labs or our libraries and think it's enough that we've written a paper that might be read by 20 or 30 academic colleagues. Yet surely, if an idea is not worth sharing with a broader audience, then it's difficult to know what that idea is really all about. This is why we support, in a very significant way, technology transfer. And last year at Oxford, we celebrated our 100th spin-out company, the largest number of any university in the UK. It's why we're also so keen on sharing advice and, and partnership with governments, and one of the research collaborations that we'll be celebrating on this trip to India is the Young Lives Project. And that's a project that's am amassed a wealth of data about the effects of poverty on children. And that as part of that research project, we have advised the Indian government on potential policy solutions. It's also why we put so many of our lectures online. And let me encourage all of you to go to the iTunes U site. Uh, you'll find that the Oxford iTunes U site is one of the world's most visited university sites for that material that is on it. And this outreach, this willingness and wanting to share our work with the world is the reason why we began the Oxford lecture series to share the best and the most important ideas that Oxford has to offer. And it's no coincidence that we've come here to India to discuss some of the exciting scholarship that we are engaged in today. India understands the importance of strong universities to a country's development. The, the, the creation of the outstanding Indian Institutes of Technology just after independence very much testifies to that and the development of newer universities in recent times. The Nobel Prize winning economist Amartya Sen, as you all know, wrote that wonderful book called The Argumentative Indian. And I love that title. He highlights that great tradition in, in India of robust and vigorous debate. 
And those of you who know Oxford well know that that's a tradition much followed in Oxford. And I think the only group that uh, may be more argumentative than Indians may be Oxonians. And certainly when they are dealing with their vice chancellor, I can tell you that's the case. In fact, there are many, many links between Oxford and India. The relationship goes back more than 400 years when Father Thomas Stevens of New College, Oxford, became the first recorded Englishman to visit India. We opened Oxford University Press in Delhi more than 100 years ago. Testament again to that length of, of partnership and connection. But I have to say, it's really in the last decade that this relationship between India and Oxford has taken off. We believe that Oxford, perhaps among all of the world's leading universities outside India, has the largest collection, the largest community of Indian students and academics. Today, there are nearly 400 Indian students studying in Oxford. There are more than 100 Indian academics on our faculty, and we have more than 1,500 alumni living in India. And those numbers are increasing every year. We also have what we believe is the most extensive set of research collaborations with Indian partners of any university in the West. Across at least 16 Indian states, we're working with universities, hospital and research institutions, government and business on virtually every topic imaginable under the bright Indian sun. The research focuses on sustainable development and archaeology, India's new economy and the effects of adversity on children. And the subject of tonight's lecture very much is a focus for many of our collaborations. That is the advancement of medicine and medical research, and very especially the improvement of healthcare and the provision of healthcare. We are especially interested in the exciting place where new medical research, technology, and entrepreneurship come together. This is the speciality of our distinguished speaker tonight, Professor Robin Norton. Robin is the Professor of Public Health and James Martin Professorial Fellow at the University of Oxford. And to show her global connections, she's also the Professor of Public Health at the University of Sydney. She's also a founder and principal director of the George Institute for Global Health, which has branches in Oxford, in India, and in a number of other countries around the world. Robin and her colleagues are working on a fundamental challenge in the 21st century. That is how to bring high quality healthcare access to everyone and how to keep a lid on rising costs while doing it. This is a problem for the UK just as much it is a, as it is a problem for India. And Robin is part of developing some exciting solutions that we'll hear about tonight. After Robin's talk, we have another exciting treat in store, which will be a panel discussion featuring, fe featuring two luminaries on the Indian healthcare scene. And after the panel is finished, around about eight o'clock, I want to invite all of you to stay for the reception afterwards, which will be held on the terrace outside. So enough of preliminaries. It's my great pleasure, and I will ask you, let me take one time out. First of all, I will ask you all, please, as I'm told as a vice chancellor, it's my responsibility to tell you to turn off your mobiles. And with that, especially Nairi, to turn off yours, uh, it's my great pleasure to warmly welcome Robin, Professor Robin Norton to the stage. Robin.